Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine reporting to you here today with Entomology Farm Advisor uh, David Haviland from the UC Cooperative Extension. Wanted to uh, talk about Pierce's disease and glassy wing sharpshooter. Those two go hand in hand, they right? Do. Yeah, they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> Causing a lot of problems and, and we've had a lot of success, but we're hearing in the general Beale area over the years in managing uh, both the pest and the disease. Um, but as anything, you know, we never know when we can, it can make a resurgence. Absolutely. And I uh, want to talk about that a little bit here today. If you could, could tell us where the cur what the current status of, of this uh, disease and the pest is. Yeah, no, so, you know, Glasswing Sharpshooter has been in Kern County for about 20 years. And it's pretty much anywhere that, uh, along the foothills where we grow grapes, uh, up on the side of the hills where it likes the temperatures. And we have the disease. So we've got a sort of melting pot of, of those two that have come together and have caused some significant problems. Um, so we've had some major epidemics of Pierce's disease in Kern County, uh, particularly on the east side. Um, but uh, contrary to that, we've had the you know, USDA program with CDFA help and ag commissioners and UC, and lots of people come in for, uh, for programs to help with that. And those programs have been great. Uh, most people have probably heard of the General Beale Pilot Project, which is about 30, uh, about 30 square miles of, of area on the east side of Kern County, right in the heart of Pierce's disease. And for 20 years now, excellent coordinated treatment programs with the citrus growers. Grape growers have been you know, pulling out the diseased vines. They've been doing their own treatments. And essentially, year after year after year of killing the sharpshooters in the citrus in the winter, killing them in the grapes in the summer, and then removing all the infective vines, that program together, uh, we've actually got the disease levels driven down to very, very, very low numbers as we speak right now. Right, but you know that vector, how's, how, what's the status of the vector here? Yep, that's the other half. So, so where we are right now is the disease is really low. It's great. Uh, the sharpshooter numbers have been really low for about three years. The problem is uh, the sharpshooter numbers in 2020 as we speak right now, have actually gone up quite a bit. And that's not just in the General Beale area. It's you know throughout Kern County, uh, a lot of Tulare County also. Um, numbers are, I don't want to say through the roof, but unacceptable levels of sharpshooters right now. So um, you know, there's about a one year lag time between when we have sharpshooters and when the increase in diseases show up, just because that's how long it takes for the vines to become uh, symptomatic so you can actually see that they're infected. Um, so people are scared right now, you know, because sharpshooter numbers up now means disease up next year. And so, um, you know, growers, government organizations are, are coming together right now to figure out what's the best way forward to make sure that we knock out the sharpshooter over the winter so that we can keep that disease level really low and not allow a backslide or, or any kind of resurgence on the disease level in the county. Right now, growers uh, that are spraying possibly for other uh, pests of their of their vines, uh, are there similar things that you can spray on f for other pests that will work on the glass and wing sharpshooter yeah. as well? Yeah, the two first, right? The two birds with one stone. It's kind of what we're trying to get at. Um, there actually are some, and um, you know, some of the main products we're using these days for glass wing sharpshooter uh, in the citrus, um, pyrethroids which of course are also beneficial for Asian citrus psyllid, which is one of the citrus growers' major concerns. Um, but neonicotinoids can also be effective on, on a few different pests. Um, and actually, uh, Savanto is actually quite effective product on glasswing sharpshooter too. And it can have some benefit on some scale and other things in the citrus. So, so yes, uh, a citrus grower doesn't need to treat exclusively for sharpshooter. They can get some other benefit out of it. Um, and on the grape grower side, uh, on the summer treatments, a lot of the products that control glasswing sharpshooter will also help control vine mealybug, um, or in some cases, black widow spiders. So, you know, integrated pest management, absolutely. You're always trying to put everything together, find the best way to kill as many pests as possible, but do so in a way that maintains and preserves, you know, all the beneficials that you have to the maximum extent possible. And citrus and grape growers are both very much, uh, very dedicated to, to doing that, to keeping the good guys around, but, you know, not letting the disease ruin their their business right. well that's great to hear that there's some indirect things that they probably are already doing engaged in with these uh, their IPM programs that can help control this pest uh, hopefully we won't get to the point where we have to uh, apply direct measures again but we'll see how things go read more about these things in American Vineyard Magazine I'm Matthew Malcolm
californiaagnet.com.